the build interpreters we should be, will be using the Dr. Racket IDE. So let's open that up. Dr. Racket works for us because it supports many different languages inside. Right now we've got the hash line line that says Racket, but if we change that to Split, now we're coding in Split. So let's make a new function. If we go over here and click the Run button, then down at the bottom we can call our function. Boom, so the result is an integer and the value is 11. Another thing that we'll get out of Dr. Racket is this Handin plugin. So homework zero, we'll go through how to install this. And then this is what you'll use to submit assignments. Split comes with documentation, and this is the best way to learn more about the language. You can view the docs online at that URL, and you also have a local version of the docs that'll come installed when you get the package. So back to Dr. Racket here, if we click F1, that will open the docs. And we can also go to the help menu up top and click Racket Documentation. Here in the search bar, type in Split, And then there we are at the local version of the docs. Another thing that we can do is search for keywords to Split. So we saw fun back in Dr. Racket. We can narrow that down to Split only. And now we have the docs for the fun definition form. And the last thing I want to point out here is that Splate comes with a tutorial. So definitely go through the tutorial and learn more about the language. But also, the tutorial is going to be the subject of the next class. So you can watch the videos for that to get started, too. Now, here's a preview of the different notations that we'll see in Splate. So on the left column, we have math notation. And on the right column, we have Splate notation. And you'll see, except for a few keywords on the right, these are basically the same. So to call a function in Split, you write the function name, open parenthesis, and then a list of arguments, and then close parenthesis. If there's more than one argument, add commas in between them. To add two numbers, just write one plus two. There happens to be white space in this example, but you can remove that and you'll get the same result. If you're mixing addition and multiplication, Split knows the order of operations, so it'll get the parentheses right for you. To define a variable, use def. To define a function, use fun. And for a conditional statement, here's the syntax. Pond, then the vertical bar, a test, colon, and then the result expression. Moving on to split data types, we have numbers and strings, like you see in lots of other languages. We also have Booleans in split, and you write those as hash true and hash false. And we'll also use symbols quite a bit over the semester. So you write a symbol with hash, quote, and then the, a string of characters. So a symbol is a bit like a string, but really it's an atom on its own, whereas a string is a composite of a few characters. But we'll, we'll see lots more of the symbols in the future. And then the last important split data type to know for now is code. So if you use single quotes instead of string quotes to open and close a string, what you get is a syntax object, a piece of code. So open single quote x, close single quote, gives a piece of code that refers to the identifier x. And then you can have a bigger expression like x plus 1 sitting inside the code, and you can also have a function inside the code. Let's move back to Dr. Racket and see what this looks like. So we'll make a new variable, def my code, open string quote. Run. OK, and we see that my code is a variable whose type is syntax and whose value is this open single quote code expression, a syntax object. And the important thing to point out is the syntax object knows a lot more than just the characters inside that piece of code. These Guillemet quotes, they show that there's block structure inside. That x plus 1 expression is sitting inside the function body. So having a split value that represents code is going to be very convenient for us because it gets rid of a whole mess of parsing problems we'd have to deal with otherwise. We still have to do a bit of parsing, but for the most part, we can set that aside and focus instead on semantic programming language concepts.